Over the last few weeks, I got to experience quite a bit of San Miguel de Allende. Here are a few things from my trip. I didn't get a picture of the basins at El Choro, but something that I found to be interesting is that El Choro was traditionally used for washing clothes. One of the prettiest places we went to was El Mirador. El Mirador means to look out, which is a spot on description of what we saw. The highlight of my trip was probably the Dia de los Locos Parade. I had never been to a parade that was longer than one hour, but this parade blew that statistic out of the park. We danced for over three hours and loved every minute of it. My favorite theme was the Coco one. I even got a picture with Mama Imelda Rivera. At the parade, everyone had umbrellas. I wondered why, but found out quickly when candy was literally thrown my way. The Procria de San Miguel Arenco is located at the center of the town square. It has a beautiful pink color that it gets from the limestone it is made out of and from the sun. Also, throughout my three weeks in Mexico, I saw many people sporting the Equipo de Football Mexicano jersey in honor of the Copa Munidal. We saw moigangas every day. We ventured to the garden in San Miguel. These nearly 15 foot characters were often nearby or in wedding parties that paraded through the streets of town to celebrate the up and coming Park Benio Juarez is home to all kinds of people, but the most interesting people it contained were artists. It was established in 1904 and has served the community ever since. We passed El Menonile, but we didn't go in. This is because cantinas don't have the best reputations. They are known for serving men and having women who work in a format similar to those of a strip club. Standing, or shall I say riding tall in Plaza Civica, is General Ignacio José de Allende. To show his bravery, he wields a sword in his hand. We didn't get to go into the shoe store, but we heard wonderful things about it. Apparently, the shoes are made to withstand the cobblestones of even the worst roads in San Miguel. The La Comena Bakery was my favorite place to frequent throughout my stay. Six peso pastries were music to my ears. I bought many items that I love, but if I had to choose between the lote and concha, I'd pick the concha. Fabrica La Aurora is now a mall-like station for art and culture. It was formerly a textile factory. You can see hints of its industrial past by looking at some of the machinery located throughout the buildings. We saw around 19 art galleries, but unfortunately didn't get to all of them. We saw bougainvilleas everywhere in Mexico. They are native to South America and were originally discovered by Europeans in Brazil in 1768. The canyon at the botanical garden was breathtaking. Did you know that the canyon's embankment once provided energy for the Fabrica La Aurora? Walking into Casa Carly, you can see trees lined down the road. They look like the El Sabino trees we have right here in Texas. I tried really, really hard to get an image of fireworks going off in San Miguel, but failed. According to the locals and Google, fireworks or skyrockets are shot off often to celebrate events of all kinds, but one special reason is to celebrate the days of the six patron saints. We also went to La Bodica on the second to last day in San Miguel. We didn't actually end up asking them for medical advice, but they were able to tell us where La Comina Bakery was. The Biblioteca Publica has an interesting history. Before being offered to Miss Helen Well in 1958 to use as the local library so that she could move her plethora of books out of her house, it was a community house for poor women. After the women were removed during the War of Reform, the building became the local slaughterhouse. Now it serves as the public library of San Miguel de Allende. The Tuesday market was paradise. I loved all of the little shops. I bought my Mexico jersey there. I also had a delicious lunch there which consisted of traditional tacos and Coca-Cola in a bottle. Although we didn't make it to see the sunset at the Rosewood Hotel, I did get to see the awe-stopping view from the top. I felt very underdressed. People there wore suits, ties, and fancy dresses. I even saw that the hotel had clay courts. I'll be back one day. Riding the funicular Peromica was an experience of a lifetime. The maze of roads up the steep mountain make this attraction a necessity. 
El Pibola, also known as Juan Jose de los Reyes Martinez, earned his place in history when he tied an enormous rock onto his back, marched to the doors of La Honriga, and burned them down, allowing the rebel army to swarm in and massacre families held within. La Gruta means grotto, which is very fitting for the title of the hot springs. This is because the main attraction of La Gruta is the grotto that you enter through a dark tunnel with waist deep water. The main part is filled with hot water and a tube where even hotter water pours out. The mummy museum was quite an experience. The mummies were fairly well preserved. The mummy I took the most interest in was the baby mummy, which was the smallest known mummy in the world. Apparently, the quality of the soil that mummified the bodies is somewhat unknown. It is known that the soil was dry and the weather wasn't humid, but as for the actual soil composition, we may never know. We passed by the theater often, but never had time to go in. One thing I loved to look at while we passed the theater was a group of bronze statues atop the theater representing the muses of Greek mythology.